Say, what could be cooler than owning a pristine original 54 Corvette? Well, how about one fitted with a fine 409? Recently, our buddies on the Muscle Car Show bravely began a radical restoration project on a well-spent 61 Impala, beefing up the frame and even having it powder-coated. Lots of major surgery here, replacing floor pans, trunk pans, and so forth. Now, I guess for an old beauty like this Impala, this was like getting collagen or Botox. Then, some modern upgrades like a complete air suspension system. Now, these dudes were men on a mission with a vision of a car already named Project Red Sled. And for us horsepower guys in charge of building the engine, this thing had 409 written all over it. It was born during the heyday of the race on Sunday, buy on Monday era. That is, after GM engineers took their 348 engine, poured it out to 409 cubic inches, and made 360 horsepower. Soon after its debut in 61, it was off to the races and winning. A year later, a 409 with twin four barrel carbs was the first motor ever to match horsepower with cubic inches. Although production ceased in 1965, the 409 legacy and allure lives on and on. People look at it and most of the younger kids say, what is that? <laughs> well, I knew the place to start our 409 build was Lamar Walden's shop in Georgia. Now, he's been fooling with 409 since the early 60s. Lamar was a pro stock racer in the 70s and early 80s, first driving Vegas, then Chevy Monzas in NHRA competition. With a special passion for Chevy's first big block, he built and drove the fastest 409 car in history. Now, decades later, he's preserving the engine's history by helping 409 fans with their muscle classics and street rods alike. When you've got a 32, 34 Ford, and it's got a small block in it. If you've seen one, you, you've seen 2,000. But one shows up with a 409 in it, and the crowd's all around it. I was really pumped about bringing this old block we found here for expert machining. These guys like to bore them 30 to 60 thousandths, but seems like this old truck block was way overboard. As a racer, it, it might work, but for, uh, for a street motor, we're gonna have to go with another block. I think you got one? I'm sure we can dig one up over there. Okay. Sorry, Block. <laughs> now, Blocks for these motors are increasingly scarce. Fortunately, they had one they could trade us. Here's something I learned. If you find a block with an X on it, it's got higher nickel content and maybe a good candidate. You'd bolt the plate down to the block with these four holes. Then you'd bolt the bar down to the plate and bore off of the deck. The design of the block is part of the uniqueness of the 409. The combustion chamber is merely in the block itself. And when you end up with a flat piston, a small combustion chamber with a real good quench area in it, you won't get torqued. This Bel Air runs in a nostalgic stock class with a 409 that makes 592 horsepower at the wheels. All part of Lamar's learning the old weaknesses and potential strengths of the motor. Over the 20 years that I've beat on this old iron here, <laughs> we found what it likes and what it don't like, and uh, the piston design is real critical on making horsepower. The, the squinch of the, of the head has got to be perfect. The pistons that Lamar's making for our 409 with his CNC machine are quite an improvement from the factory design. This piston here is just a basic 425 horse with the uh, 560 horse rings. Uh, stock compression height for the six inch rod, where this piston here will be run with a four inch stroke crankshaft with a 6135 rod, so the compression distance you can see is a lot different. Another weakness in the original motor was the valve train, namely push rods poking out of a block without guide plates. The guide plates was just strictly a hole drilled through the head, the push rod ran through it, and, and it stuck up so far above the head itself got a lot of deflection in the push rod, so of course the push rod would bend and when it kicks sideways, bam. Using more CNC technology, Lamar is making improved new heads for the 409 and the Z11, along with intake manifolds that even can handle a 671 supercharger, plus other products to meet the demands of new 409 aficionados. <laughs> Meanwhile, our block's getting its deck surfaced 
And here the mains get a complete line honing. This is the final honing after our boring, uh, leaving the block, you know, roughly 5,000 small. Well, it was five on one, one bank and seven on the other. And from here, we're gonna, gonna hone it to finish size. For this process that we have uh, on this particular block with the rings we're using, we use two different stones, start with a roughing 220 and finish with, uh, with a 280 grit. Well, finally, I catch up with Rob Walden, who's been balancing our new Eagle crank. Say, what have you done so far? Well, we spun it up and rough balanced it in. We had to drill a hole on this end and then another hole on this end and then to get it to come around for the 2400 gram bob weight that we made up for the, the rods and the pistons that we're using on this combination. So when Rob's finished here and his dad wraps up the piston making, we can get to work ourselves, building our own fine 409. Reviving some of its unique history for the first time ever in the horsepower shop.